Hello, the idea of this short video was to introduce people to short clip and the horse clippers that, uh, that you can see here. These clippers are very robust, they're lightweight, low vibration and they keep very cool, which are all important things when you're clipping your horse. So, if we can start, we'll run through some of the basics of how to set up the clipper and then we'll go on to show you how to do a short clip and a, a trace clip on the actual uh, horse over here. One of the main problems with uh, clipper performance is setting the clipper up correctly and this is very important. So the first thing that you need to do when you're setting up your clipper is using the tool remove or undo the two screws on the bottom. Slacken those off. Take off the tension here by turning this. So you've removed the tension, you've slackened these two screws off, now the comb which is the bottom can come out and the blade which is the top can come off quite easily. So you have the two, thing, two items here. Now, the first one to put back on is the blade and you can see it's got the two holes here. These line up with the two teeth here. Once they're on, you can put the comb on. The comb goes this way around so you can see that it's got some indentations on that side. You put those on. Now, you'll notice that you can line up on the back, this black back here, you can line up where this part, where the, where the comb is going to fit. And that comb goes backwards and forwards and is adjustable. And that's, that's the idea behind having the two screws so that you can get the right length. Now basically what's happening is you will want to set it up so the teeth are roughly two millimetres behind the front of the comb. And this, the main reason for this is obviously so that you don't cut the animal or get any danger for the horse. So, move this back slightly up to about sort of two, three, three millimetres and then tighten it up with the, with the tool here. You might find this is a bit of trial and error and you might need to adjust this later on. But once you've got the correct length, you'll find the cutting a lot easier, a lot easier. So there we go, we'll tighten that up. And I've actually tested it up and it's just a little bit too far back off of there at the moment. So I'll adjust it and move it back just slightly. Setting it up again. And there we go. Yep, and that's about right. After you've got the correct blade set up, using the screws here, and you've got the correct width back from the uh, front of the comb, then you need to adjust the tensioning. You can adjust the tensioning using this screw here. And what you need to do is you need to tighten up until you can feel it getting reasonably stiff, reasonably stiff, and then just go back about half a turn. This you can do by trial and error, by trying on the horse and then tightening it or releasing the tension a bit. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to have it too tight because if it's too tight, it'll cause wear on the blades, excess wear. Obviously you don't want that to happen. And then you don't want them too slack so that the teeth are chattering because this can damage the teeth and you just will not get the, uh, the correct performance. Remember to oil your clippers well before you start and then occasionally during your clipping. It should be absolutely safe to the touch when the motor is running so there's no blade sticking in front. I'm here with Emma and Primrose and we're going to start showing you how to do a trace clip. So Emma, if I can uh, give these clippers over to you, maybe you can uh, show us how we go.
I fixed it, you can go over it the way the hair goes and then take it up the way opposite to get a really clean when the hair is really thick. So what, you actually go both ways over the coat? Yeah, if it's really long, like... Uh, like... With, with some of the difficult parts, are you actually pulling the skin a little bit? Yeah, just so that the skin's really flat, so you haven't got any wrinkles in the skin, especially around the chest area where they get wrinkly. So just pull the skin and then like that. Right. How often the blades need to be sharpened? Once every three clips if we're doing a hunter clip. Right. Three, three clips. Is it important to have a clean horse before? Yeah, very important. All mud, wet, gone. And not wet either. Completely dry. Completely dry. Yeah. So would the best thing to be to bring it in the day, wash it the day before? No, you don't have to wash them. Just make sure they're free of mud and sweat. Right. And the coat's completely dry and green. So Emma, are there any things you can do if your horse is very nervous? Well, first of all, approach the horse um, and always come to the shoulder. Uh, and what you can do is rest the clippers against the horse, like so, so they get used to the vibration and the noise. If you've got a highly sensitive horse, which is really sensitive to the noise, um, you can run a electric toothbrush, which is slightly less noisy, until they get used to that and slowly um, build up the noise. Um, keep the clipper running while you know the horse is eating, and so they become more relaxed with it. Or take out your horse that you haven't clipped before and pick a horse that's well behaved next to it to begin with uh, until they get used to you know the noise. And always start off at the shoulder. Right. How do you approach some of the more tricky areas on the horse? Well, underneath, well, just behind the front legs, that's always really tricky to get to with the pair of clippers. So, with your assistant handy, get them to pick up the horse's leg and pull it forwards. I'm not sure I'm doing it. demonstration together is to show customers how to use their clippers. Don't let the very cheap price of these clippers put you off. They're something like 20% the cost of a market leader and there's absolutely no reason you shouldn't get the same performance and the same lifetime out of your clippers as long as you look after them properly. And the, out of any clippers that we get returned, very very few have a fault. The main problems with return clippers are customers not setting them up correctly. The set of clippers that you saw Emma use earlier on today have been returned by a customer and the reason that they were returned is they said that they didn't work. But in actual fact there's no problem with the clippers, they've just been set up incorrectly because of the blade length, as you saw we demonstrate earlier, adjusting it with these two screws and the tensioning. So I think there's only one more thing to say and that is you should really use a circuit breaker, an RDC circuit breaker on your extension cable just in case there's any problems. And uh, happy clipping! Thank you.